Hello, my friends. In this video, we will be exploring the DNA of an Upper Paleolithic person from Anatolia. This person is colloquially known as Pinarbasi Hunter Gatherer or ZBC. Uh, in terms of his mitochondrial lineage, his mitochondrial lineage is K2B and his Y DNA is actually C, uh, which is really unusual for, uh, for Eurasians nowadays, C1A2. With my trade predictor, his most precise subclade is C. All right. And let me just show you what he scores with GD match calculators. We're going to start with Eurogene's K13. Actually, this is the only GD match calculator I'm going to show for him because you can see uh, this result is very, uh, very modern. It is not a result you would expect from a person from the Upper Paleolithic, upper paleolithic at all. Uh, if you look at this result, it looks like a. Um, it looks very similar to Anatolian farmers and uh, what European farmers would score as well. Uh, so it is surprising this, that this individual is from the Upper Paleolithic because let me look at the time period again uh, when he lived. Uh, okay, yes. So the time period, let's find that, is thirteen, um, thirteen thousand years before the common era uh it is technically it is technically the very very end of the upper paleolithic so it's not like a very distant genome like for example there's uh Sungir genomes right above this um but it is still it is still in the paleolithic period it is still before the mesolithic period in anatolia so uh it's just kind of very interesting that it's such an ancient genome and it's resembling modern sardinians and uh european farmers so uh, so precisely you can see with eurogenes k13 he's scoring 48 percent west mediterranean of uh, 29 percent east mediterranean very typical uh, score for european farmer 16 percent north atlantic which is kind of lower uh, a little bit lower than what european farmers tend to score four percent red sea and 0.74% East Asian, and he's not scoring any archaic components such as Sub-Saharan African or uh, uh, South Asian or stuff that, for example, Zuzuana cave uh, genome that I analyzed uh, used to score. So it is a modern, it is quite a modern person with modern affinities and modern, uh, it's basically like a modern Sardinian, pretty much. So let's go ahead and look at his uh, ethnic calculator results with my trade predictor and here he is closest to Newgrange, Newgrange Neolithic farmer from Britain followed by himself the reason he's closest he's not 100% like close to himself the reason there is no 0, 0.000 between him and this reference here uh, is that these are actually two different files that I'm using for this comparison uh, the original file was a little bit different than this one because it's a different conversion method so because of that it is not closest to itself but it is closest to a new ground 10 british neolithic farmer and also um at the time that i was making this oracle the ethnicity calculation itself was a little bit different so because of those factors he's not scoring closest to himself but he is closer to british neolithic farmers uh, then himself, then Assyrians, then Iron Age Anatolians, kind of like that. All right, let's go ahead and check what he scores for the Nashakot calculator, what his um, phenotype would be. And it looks like he has darkest brown eyes. Uh, there is also a 28% likelihood of brown eyes, but most likely he's got darkest brown eyes. Most likely he has black, black hair, uh, very improbable for him to have any hair color lighter than black. Uh, light brown skin, <coughs> very improbable for him to have skin color that's diff different from light brown. And for hair texture, looks like he's got wavy hair. Kinky hair is very improbable, but curly or straight is possible. It looks like he does not have blue eye haplotype 3 or blue eye haplotype 2, but he does have blue eye haplotype 1. Okay. And he actually has one ginger variant in MC1R, so he has one um, 
one genotype here in the MC1R gene that predisposes him to having red hair, which is quite interesting, quite cool to see. All right. Uh, now let's go ahead and check his phenotype oracle, just what modern phenotypes he might resemble uh, based on the Nashakot results. So the closest phenotype would be this, followed by this, followed by this. Very interesting. Uh, so definitely quite brown and not uh, not a... He doesn't look like a Sardinian, uh, but uh, genetically, out of some old DNA, he resembles Sardinians. But I'd say Sardinians are a little bit whiter than this. Um, let's go ahead and look at the polygenic risk scores right now. It looks like he's got a above average score for myopia, above average score for primary biliary cirrhosis, below average score for stroke, uh, above average score for male pattern hair loss. Well, that's typical. If you're European, uh, you will typically score higher for male pattern hair loss. Looks like he's got a slightly below average score for atrial fibrillation, below average score for deep vein thrombosis, slightly below average score for bipolar type 1, slightly below average score for schizophrenia, a very high risk score for type 2 diabetes, and average score for Alzheimer's, and below average score for multiple sclerosis. So the only thing that is really concerning here is the very high score for type 2 diabetes. For cancer section, it looks like he's got one risk variant for breast cancer out of eight which is really good. 11 risk variants for testicular cancer out of 16, which is not so good. So testicular cancer, once again, is a problem, is a concern. For celiac disease section, looks like he's got one risk variant for celiac disease out of eight. Pretty typical. For GSS, zero risk variants out of six, which is pretty good. Crohn's, four out of 24, which is pretty good. Nothing was found for Raffenstein's, and he's got one risk variant for Parkinson's out of 12, which is once again pretty typical. Okay. Uh, now let's see his uh, <coughs> biomarkers panel. What he scores for that. So it looks like he's got a above average level of vitamin D, which is really good to see. Uh, above average level of LDL cholesterol, which is not good to see at all. Below average level of HDL cholesterol, which is once again not good to see at all. Uh, but it's still kind of within the healthy range for both of them, so that's good. For glucose, it looks like he's got a below average level of glucose, which is good to see. For hemoglobin, looks like he's got pretty much spot on average um, levels of hemoglobin, which is once again pretty good to see. For blood pressure, looks like he's got slightly higher than average blood pressure. Uh, actually, I think this would fall into the elevated blood pressure. So he's predicted blood pressure based on his genotypes is that he's got elevated blood pressure, which is kind of kind of not, not so good. For level of iron in blood, looks like he's got a typical level of iron in blood. All right, pretty good. Uh, I'm just going to go through this and see if there's anything I want to talk about here. It looks like he does not have the A1 or and TAC1, so he's got typical genotype for most humans and therefore slightly higher number of dopamine d in the brain. It looks like he does not have uh, short-form 5-HTTLPR. I mean, does not have long-form 5-HTTLPR, so he's got short-form 5-HTTLPR, slightly higher odds of depression. Um, does not carry the European lactose persistence mutation. Uh, we're going to skip all that. We're going to skip all that. I don't really want to talk about this. No micropenis. Really good to see. Uh, and we're going to skip all that. We're going to skip all that. We're going to we're gonna skip all that. So for male pattern hair loss, these are the two, uh, the two variations that were found in this file. And they both contribute to higher odds of male pattern hair loss. Okay. Um, HIV and AIDS panel. That's actually pretty good. He's got two protective variants here. 90% reduction in HIV viral load. Definitely really good stuff. Uh, I noticed that back when I was making my, my videos on Anatolian Neolithic farmers, like most of them scored this. So uh, I think this kind of protection from HIV might be an Anatolian Neolithic farmer thing. Um, color blindness, one risk variant in OP and one SW. Okay. Uh, we're gonna, we don't care about all that stuff. For, for blood group, it looks like his blood group is type O. All right. The most common blood group. Well, that's pretty much all there is that I wanted to show you for this sample. Thanks for watching my video until the very end. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. And also, um, you can download this file in 2030 me format from link, which is in the description of the video. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.